God's grace my heart to fear and raise the If we praise him like we love him, come on. Praise God, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Eternal Father, we thank you, God. We thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for being a wholesome God. We thank you, Father, that you don't leave anything half done. Father, through many dangerous toys and snares, you brought us, Lord God. And we recognize you have not brought us this far to leave us. We thank God for this second year celebration of Pastor Evans. We thank you, Lord God, that you moved in his life, that you navigated his step, that he's acknowledged your presence and allowed you to direct his path. We thank you, Lord God, that he looks to the hill from which cometh all you, his help. We pray, Lord God, continue to shower down your blessings upon this pastor and this church that sits in this spot. But Lord God, we thank you for the evangelistic work that it is doing in our community. Continue, Lord God, to give them the strength that they might move according to your will. Lord, dip me now in thy storehouse of knowledge. Allow me, Lord, to flow your, your word clearly that it might be heard and received in our hearts that we won't sin against thee. We thank you now. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. We really had a good time thus far. We thank God for everything that you're doing. Pastor Evans, I want to preach and, and get out of here. I know it's been a long day for you, you all, but I, I want to talk out of Ezekiel 37 uh, this afternoon, and i like to go 37, and I want to read for you hearing verses 11 through 14, and then y'all permit me to deal with what's in the chapter, amen? All right. Then he said unto me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they see, our bones are dry and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore, prophecy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. When I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves, and shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. And I want to talk about today out of Ezekiel. Ezekiel. I want to talk about the preacher's compass. And the compass is the word of God. The preacher's compass. Uh, the pastor is not guided by popularity. He's not guided about, guided by what you think sounds good and, and what you think ought to be preached. Uh, but his compass is directed by the Lord Almighty. I tell you that because the Lord God called him. And so therefore the Lord God's right to direct him according to his needs and where he should go. And I want to talk about dry bones. And, and, and I want to talk about dry bones in respect to Israel. Israel is God's own children. We're not talking about folk that are out there that don't know God. God's own people have been reduced to being dry bones. Dry bones is a symbol of no hope. How can a nation that God started with Abraham, an old man that had productive organs that were old, and Sarah produces Isaac. And Isaac comes along and gets a wife that was a Christian woman, and he has two twins, and Jacob carries on the generations. And, and, and Jacob, during a drought in the land of Cana, takes 75 folk that are the generation baggage of Abraham and goes down into Egypt to get away from the drought. And God is even good to them in Egypt. For he gives them a rich land called Gation, where they sit aside and they could grow and do whatever they want to do, even in a strange land. Even in a strange land. But you know, you can be God's children and you can stay sometimes in a place too long. Pharaoh died that were good and had a good attitude. Now they got a new Pharaoh that's saying they're giving birth to too many children. And it won't be long before we be outvoted in Egypt. So things go from being good to bad to God's people. I'm trying to show you something. Even though we're God's children, good as well as bad works together for the good for those that love the Lord and that are called according to his purpose. God leads them after 400 years in Egypt, out of Egypt, past the Red Sea and allows two million people that are the generation backing of a one old man called Abraham. You can't tell me what God can do with nothing. He proves it in his scripture that I can take nothing and make it something. Amen. And, and then they get in the wilderness, and that's all God has done for them. They decide they still want to sit their own curriculum. It looks like now they would be willing to follow Moses, who God has made the leader, but they made up in their own mind they're going to tell Moses how they want to do it. Yeah, yeah. And then God brings them out of the wilderness and let them cross the River Jordan, go into a land, walk around Jericho, and the walls come tumbling down. They get into a promised land that flows with milk and honey. Everything is working their way, and they become just as evil and wicked and stiff-necked as they could be. Even being blessed by the Lord. Y'all not hearing me. 
All I'm trying to tell you is that you need a pastor. Stiff naked in the land that God had given them to God takes Babylonian folk and takes the land away, put them in Babylon in captivity. That's where we find Mr. Ezekiel. Ezekiel is the third major prophet after Isaiah, after Jeremiah. Now here stands Ezekiel in a long captivity with Israel. Israel has been in captivity so long that they've lost hope. That's where they are. That's why they're being referred to as dry bones. Because there seem to be no way out. God has put us here. He's forgot us. And there's no hope. That's a bad place to be in. When a church has no hope, it becomes a dead church. Y'all don't hear me. We define sometimes a dead church as being one that doesn't shout on Sunday morning. We define it as one that don't have no charisma about what it said. But you can take a quiet church with faith and it can move mountains out of every way. So I come to tell you that being dead has nothing to do with your charisma. It has to do with your faith. And when you lose faith, You have no hope. So what does God do? He's not going to give up on his people. Because he promised in Genesis that he had grace and mercy that would be with them and be with us always. So what does God do? He doesn't go to California to get a preacher by a resume. He raises one up out of the children of Israel. By the name of Ezekiel. And to bring hope to the people, he takes Ezekiel and he says, he puts his hands on him. And he said, look, in the spirit of the Lord, I want to take you on a valley journey. I want to take you on a valley journey and a valley full of dry bones. Where things are breathing, but it has no life. Where things are moving, but it has no life. It comes to church every Sunday morning, but it still has no life. It leaves Sunday just the way it came. No life. No hope. Anything that gets suggested that God say do, we don't have enough to do that. There's not enough of us to do that. I want to take you through a valley of dry bones where there's no hope. And I want to show you, Ezekiel, what to use when you get there. Praise his name. In verse 3 it says, And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, I like the way you answered. There's no way that I can tell God that I know more than God. So in verse 3, he says, God, you know us. You already got the answer. Pastor, I've not come to tell you. Just ask God for the answer. Don't try to tell God what the answer is. Let God give the solution. And we take direction because we know that God knows. Yes. Amen. So, so he said, now, here's what I want you to do. Ezekiel, well, you're going to go down and I want you to prophesy in the middle of these dry bones. Yes. I don't want to give you no long, complicated message. I basically want you to say unto them, O oh, ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Yes. Now, now, I want to say something there. 
sometimes our messages last too long. If we just get up and say what the Lord say, say. Sometimes we stand too long. And when we stand too long, we get away from what God said and it becomes our, our gospel. And while you're saying amen for the preacher, you do it too. Come on with me. Because you got your little church on a pew and everybody got their church. And you got your opinion on your pew, yours on that one. And everybody's preaching their gospel. But I come to tell you the only one will work is the gospel that God spoke himself. And he wrapped it in the flesh, called him Jesus. He became the model for us to go by. Praise his name. And all you need to do is hear the preacher. Anybody hear? Hear the preacher. Oh, ye dry bones. Hear the word of the Lord. Can I talk to you? Skip a couple of verses down. He goes preach what God say and said that the bones went to connect. You know, bones make noise. You connect bones, they make noise. They click, they squeak. If you don't believe me, let me bend my knee long enough. It, it'll squeak for you. You know why it'll squeak for you? Because it's had no sinew between it. And God took the bones and put sinew in the joint so that they would not squeak. And in the ankles, he put sinew there. So when they walked, it was quiet. And after that, he put flesh on the body and put skin on the flesh so it will all stay attached. And in his proper shape, he did that. Simply by the preacher obeying what God said. If the preacher preached God's word, not only will we take on flesh, we'll live. Watch what he says now. And there's a verse in that way he said, look, he said, now, there's a body there, but they're not breathing. Right. Prophesy to the Lord. Yeah. Prophesy and talk to the wind. Yeah. Tell the winds to blow from all four positions yeah. upon his body. Yeah. And, and the bodies began to have yeah. life yeah. because they were moving according to what God said. Yeah. They didn't come in with different agendas. When it was time to praise Jesus, they praised Jesus. Yeah. They didn't look across the aisle to see who was looking at them. Their eyes was on the cross of Calvary where Jesus hung and died. It wasn't looking at their enemies. It was looking at the Savior. We come to church sometime and look across the aisle. And all of that glory and all of that, all of that energy that we have when we look across there and see our enemy, it sucks away. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. We lose the point in the song. We don't know what a song is. And if we're praying, we don't know where we're praying because we're not, our eyes is on somebody else. But I come to tell you the gospel of Jesus Christ when it's preached in the church is not about looking at your enemy. It's about lifting up Jesus Christ that it might draw all men unto him. And when the preacher preaches and lifts up Jesus, we ought to be looking at the cross. Not how short her dress is. Or how tight his shirt is fit. Calvary is where our eyes ought to be focused. I'm just about to my seat now. But watch this, Pastor. Help me here. And, and, and verse... Seven, it says something that means something to us preachers. He says, so I, Ezekiel, prophesied as I was commanded. As I was commanded. We're simply the vessels of Jesus Christ. 
And when we do it according to the way Christ tells us to do it, we'll be taken care of. I don't worry about who's going to pay me. If it's a give, I give. Because the Bible say, if you give, men will give back to you, press down, shaking together, running over. The Bible tells me that. So if God said, do it, if it gets my last, it's got my last. Yeah. Dr. Bottom said, I don't need to have church service going on in the church to give. He said, if I walk in and see an offering plate and no church is going on, I give because God has said, if you give. Y'all going to get quiet. Now, I'm going to stay here, man. If you give, I give back to you. And, and Psalm said, you can't beat God. Yeah, man. Amen. So, so speak what God says speak. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And I talked about that. I ain't going to spend no time because I want to get you out of here. But can I simply go from there and go to, the, to what happens? If we do what God says do, here's a promise that he said unto them, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. But look, they say, our bones are dry and our hope is lost. We are cut off from our parts. So therefore, Prophesy, Ezekiel, and say unto them, Thus the Lord God, behold, O my people, I will open your graves. I will open your graves. I will open your graves. Y'all ought to be shouting right there. Some of us in some, in some graves right now. But the Lord says if you listen to the preacher and the preacher preach what I tell him to preach, I will open your graves. In other words, I will resurrect you from the dead. I'm on my way to my seat. I seek my exit right now. How do I know that to be true? Because his son Jesus was a test case. He came took our place on an old rugged cross, died for our sins, put him in a borrowed tomb, but on, third, on, on, the first, on Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. You and I might borrow a grave for a little bit, but I come to tell you that Jesus is coming back. And when he come up, the dead in Christ will rise and be with him first. We will meet with him in the house. And then those that are alive will join them in a celebration. I'm looking forward to the celebration. You do know if you got any rewards coming, you will celebrate your rewards at that time. Come on with me now. There's some Christians going to get there because they simply believe that Jesus is the Christ. There's going to be others that get rewards because they served the Lord. They got up and went and did what the God had for them to do. They move when God had things for them to do, and they get rewards in heaven for their service. They get rewards for serving. I'm trying to say that, and I'm on my way to my seat. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I see the earth is getting up. I'm on my way. But I come to tell you something. I want to make one point right here. I want to take my time and do it. I'm back tight to my seat. We can say, we confess that we know what Jesus Christ did. He died. He was resurrected for our sins. And if we believe in him, we are saved. But you can't get off there. And that's where we want to get off as Christians. We want to get off right there. I'm saved. Why are you saved? Yes, sir. You're saved to be the servant of Jesus right. Christ. Right. He came and gave his life as a ransom for us. Yeah. He came to serve and, and not to be served. Yeah. So you're not saved to sit on the seat. Oh, and let the preacher tell you when to say amen. And when not, you are to serve the Lord. Yeah. 
not based on what he say, but you ought to have some down in yourself. There ought to be some in you that let you get up and serve the Lord. In the Lord worthy to be praised. Praise his holy name. Somebody ought to say something. Yeah. He's worthy. I ain't worthy. And boy, I, and before I get excited, we ought to serve him till we die. Now, I don't want to get charismatic there because I know that sometimes I feel like sometimes I don't feel like it. But when we say that, we ought to mean it. We're going to serve the Lord until we die. Not till just tomorrow, but till we die. Shiloh, keep on keeping on. Hold your head up to the, from, to the hill from which cometh all your help. But your blessings as a church going to flow through your pastor. Bless your pastor. Allow it to flow through him. I was trying to sit down. In my spirit, somebody said, he ain't my pastor. That's okay. That's okay. But I, I, I feel it. I feel it. But he's the pastor in this place. Amen. 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 I feel you when you say he's not. But dry bones, there's still dry bones in the valley. Respect the man of God that God has put here. I'm done. God bless.